Good evening. I am Dr. Professor Taylor Amato, MD, and this is my trained gorilla, Bojangles. Our cameraman, John, has been deemed unfit for video, so he'll give a little bit of a wave for you. Today's lecture is on statics. We have a compound beam here fixed to a wall. This compound beam has three different distributive loads. Our first run is over two meters, and it's six kilonewtons per meter. Our second one is from that two meters to here, and that is eight kilonewtons per meter. Our last one is, has a triangle shape, and that one goes from this eight kilonewtons per meter down to zero kilonewtons per meter. We have a moment right here. This moment is 48 kilonewton meters, and this is this beam is fixed on two rockers right here, and it has two pins, and our objective is to find the support reactions at A, B, and C. Now to calculate the distributive load. To calculate the distributive load, you have to multiply the distributive load by the distance it covers. So, in the case of the first distributive load, we have six kilonewtons per meter multiplied by the two meters it covers, giving us 12 kilonewtons. And since it is a rectangle, that force goes directly down the center of that rectangle. And that rectangle goes over two meters, therefore the force goes one meter from the left. For our second distributive load, the second large rectangle, it is calculated the same as the first one. So it's the eight kilonewtons per meter multiplied by the six meters, giving us 48 kilonewtons. And if, yet again, the distributive load force is right down the center, so that's three meters away from the beginning of that, added on to the two meters already, giving us five meters. The triangle is a little bit different for the distributive load. That distributive load, you calculate the area of that triangle, so you have the nine meters times the eight kilonewtons per meter, and then you divide that by two. And to find the distance it goes, it is one third of the distance away from the base. Since this is nine meters, one third is three meters away from right here. You add that on to those two, so you have eight plus three, giving us 11 meters away from the left. Here we have our adjusted Three body diagram. As you can see, we have added the forces from the distributive load, and we have the support reactions from A, B, and C. B and C are rocker supports, so they only have vertical support reactions. A was a fixed support, however, and because it's a fixed support, it has a moment, a vertical, and a horizontal support reaction. In the next riveting part of our solution for this problem, we break up our free body diagram into three distinct segments. We break it at pin D and E. We break it up into three distinct segments, segment AD, segment DE, and segment EC. As you can see, at pin D, we, have to, we break it up so that there is a component going in the x direction, right here, and a component going in the y direction. But for segment DE, those components have to be going in opposite directions of those that are going in AD. Over here, we have the same problem. We have to break it up. And the E has an x component, and E has a y component. And over on EC segment, we have those same components, but going in opposite directions. Now, we can see all the things from our free body diagram are stated right here. The next part is to start solving for each of these components. So, on our next boards over here, we're going to let Mr. Bojangles solve it because of his exceptional math skills. Thank you, Dr. Professor Taylor Amato, MD. As we try to solve for our force CY, we decided to take the moments at point E in order to cancel out the forces E, X, and E, Y. So we have the force of our distributed load times the distance of three meters 
plus our force Cy times the distance of 6 meters minus the initial moment of 48, giving us 26 kilonewtons. And then in order to solve for a segment DE, we need to find the forces at EX and EY. So doing the sum of the forces in the F of X, we get that EX is equal to 0. And then it, to solve for FY, we have our, the force of our distributed load plus CY minus EY, giving us that EY is equal to negative 10 kilonewtons. In order to solve for all the forces at our segment DE, we decided to start out with the sum of the forces in the X, which ended up giving that DX is equal to zero. Now in order to solve for BY, we took the moment at point D in order to cancel out DX and DY, which gave us the moment of our distributed load plus the moment of BY plus the moment of EY, which ended up giving that BY is equal to 51 kilonewtons. Now we still have to solve for DY in order to solve for the segment of AD. So uh, giving BY, uh, EY, our distributed load and dy, we get that dy is equal to 7 kilonewtons. Now, with the segment AD, we are trying to find the forces AX, AY, and the moment at point A. So in order to find AX, we took the sum of the forces at F of X, which gives us dx plus AX, which ends up with AX being equal to 0. And then in the F of Y, we have our dy our distributed load, and our AY, which is a, that AY is equal to negative 19 kilonewtons. And then with our moment, we took the moment at point D, canceling out DX and DY, which gave us 0 plus our moment at point A plus the moment of the distributed load minus the, the moment of AY, giving us that M of A is equal to 26 kilonewtons. Smashing job, Mr. Bojangles. Your math skills have proved themselves again. Well, everybody, oh, crikey. Well, looks like we're out of time for this session, so I wish you all a good evening. Cheerio.